to have the podcast in those that week or whatever without him. He wanted to see if y'all could do it by yourselves. You know what y'all did? Nothing. He doesn't respect you niggas as creators because you never created anything without him assisting. I hope that sinks in your fucking brain. Music to, to, to companies and labels, but I don't care about that because they owe us anyway. So fuck them. Mm -hmm. Never in a million years did I think you would be sitting somewhere talking crazy about me. Not a nigga like me, a nigga that ain't even nothing but stand up with you. My, as long as you know me, I, I never did no foul shit to Joe. Never. In fact, I've gotten Joe out of situations where it could have been bad for him. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like really bad for him. I, I can see him in a different lens. I front line that. Me. Mm -hmm. When that shit happened with Consequence, my man popped on Cons. No disrespect to Cons. But that was my homie. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That was my homie that front lined that. Mm -hmm. He caught, yo, nigga cons swung on me. Yo, niggas got to come down here. Say no more. But now you trying to play like I was some flunky nigga sleeping on the couch like you found me on some corner and gave a nigga a roof over you. Who you fuck? Yes, you were a fucking bum. What you think you talking to, nigga? You talking to you, you And I don't mean to present this type of energy, man. No, but that no, shit, no. niggas ain't going to assassinate Maul's character. My shit been A1. Any nigga that know me that had dinners with me, my, my shit is A1. So don't ever sit nowhere on no fucking platform and try to make it seem like you came and saved me from the streets or, or you scooped me up off a corner and I was in front of 7-Eleven stinking and shit. <laughs> we not doing that. We not doing that. That's not happening. I don't, I don't, and I don't like doing this shit. Maul's real cool. We, you know, I don't even, I don't even put this type of energy out there. But when niggas try to defamate my character, I don't play with that. You could steal from me. You mean the fame? You could. Did you just say you could steal from me? That's why you mad. You're claiming Joe stole from you. All right, if you say you can steal from me, let niggas steal. Take money from me. You could do whatever you want. But one thing you know. Why are you here then? not going to do is defamate my character and try to put me out here to the people like I'm some nut ass nigga. We All right. With that statement, I hope you never assume that. You said he could steal from you. You said he could rob you blindly, but he just can't defamate, which means you want he can't defame your character. Okay, cool. You better not sue that nigga for no money. Not doing that. That's not, that's not, never, fuck this podcast, fuck this money, fuck all of this shit. You're not going to defamate my character. Yo, I hate this, man. Yo, stop acting like you real, nigga. Are you dumb? You're mad that the nigga don't want to pay y'all. Whatever y'all think y'all are owed. And y'all think he hide money. Stop saying you don't, stop saying fuck this money. You're arguing over the money. Why niggas be acting cool like that? I don't give a fuck about none of this. You care all about this. What are you talking about? Character, my nigga. I've been too solid of a nigga. Too solid of a nigga for you to ever sit somewhere and try to defamate my character. Shut you know up, nigga. You, you hit Tide Pods under your pillow, nigga. Fuck that. Fuck that, man. You hid Tide Pods under your pillow. You deserve nothing. Your brother is, is a part owner of Rockefeller, and you are living with Joe Budden. Fuck that. Not doing that. When you said that fuck shit you said to me at Park's crib, talking about you, this is none of your business. It's none of your business. I knew what it was then. And I told you that, Rory. I said, mm -hmm. yo, Rory, it's over. And he was like, what you talking about? I said, fam, this nigga just told me that this podcast is none of my business. What's Look me in my eyes and said, it's none of my business. Yo, yo, could somebody get a temperature check of this nigga? Is this nigga got COVID or some other shit? I don't give a fuck about the money, don't give a fuck about the contract, don't give a fuck about the business, don't give a fuck about podcasting. Yo, how you gonna tell me it's none of my business? Nigga, you just said you ain't give a fuck about all that shit. Why is it your business? What is wrong with this fucking idiot? You literally just said you don't give a fuck about money, podcasting, business. You don't give a fuck about anything, yet you're mad that somebody said, okay, when you ask a question about business, oh, never mind, it's none of your business. You just say you don't care about it. That for me said everything. You finally just said it, but you've been feeling like that, nigga. You've been moving like that. Which you just finally naive said shit. it. We, we're naive and thinking friends. Because I'm do. thinking you my man. There was, there was cues to it. <laughs> it's plenty of times. We traveling, we touring. I'm like, yo, fam, how am I getting the same payout 
when we sell 1,500 seats and we sell 2,000 seats. You think I'm stupid? How am I still getting the same money for that? That don't even add up. I don't care about the money, but yo, how am I still getting the same money? Chad, are y'all confused already? I kept telling y'all, Ruri, do say Palooza is in the tanks. We found out one of your men's on there been raping bitches. Real talk. We found out. Y'all niggas ran into hiding. Do say just ran backed off of y'all. You ain't want to talk about that one, do you? Oh no. Okay, cool. Bet. So do say Palooza been out of here. This is the only show in town for you, buddy. All is too cool. I don't care about podcasts. And I don't care about this. Rory and Millie Moy, I'm trying to tell y'all, this is your livelihood. Fuck acting cool. This is your livelihood. This is why you care. This is how you, you care. It don't even make sense. But what we did, that's the homie. We'll fix it. We'll figure it out. Let's just keep it moving. Let's just keep growing the show. Cool. But enough is enough, fam. <laughs> like, I'm not the smartest nigga in the room, but I'm not the dumbest nigga either. Stop it. You definitely the dumbest. Not the dumbest nigga. I'm humble. I'm forgiving. I'm, I'm laid back. I'm relaxed. I'm chill. I'm all of those things. I'm not stupid. If you're not stupid, where'd you hide the last three Tide Pods at, nigga? Where'd you hide them at, nigga? Where'd you hide them at, nigga? This is the dumbest thing in the rule. Mealy fucking mall. Jay-Z's pre-cum, he was born with a quarter of a brain. I could play like I'm stupid. I could act like I'm stupid. But sooner or later, I'm going to pull you by your coat. Yo, don't stupid niggas always say, tell you that they're acting stupid. You're like, no, you're really dumb. No, no, you're not acting. This is you. You're dumb as shit. I don't say, yo, fam, let me holler at you real quick because I peep game already. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to know that we're not doing that. And for me, that's all it was. And when he told you to miss a few episodes, when you sent me that text, I'm like, okay, this nigga trying to play the boss card. Well, no, he also said that he told me to take Tuesday and Friday off. Yo. What do you mean he's trying to play the boss? He's the boss. Wait. He's the What do you mean he's trying to play the He's the boss. Yo, these things are delusional. I keep telling y'all, these two bozos, one are working the hamburgers, one are working the fries. This is McDonald's. By the way, Joe just hired two new niggas, and they look like they cook up Krabby Patties way better than these bozos. You work the fries, that's it, nigga. That's it. That's Again, not the we text. not. <laughs> that's, I don't want to get into the text. It's lies. It's just lies, fam. And, and if we, like, and fuck it, it's over. Me until we had to talk. And, right. It, and then said, yo, let's get in our respective corners for the next month. And then came back and wait, said, yo, we abandoned the pod, even though it was some shit that you agreed upon. But listen, actually, all it was of that, your idea. Right. But all of that, <laughs> let's go to our corners. Cool. We agreed to it. But we can't go to our corners and then you pop up on the show that I I helped build and Rory helped build with some with, with two new niggas and no disrespect to them, no disrespect. I don't even want them to feel like it's negative energy towards them. No, it's I, none I, of that. No disrespect I, I to them. Ice and ish. I'm just saying they, they good people. You tried to make it look away. With you bitch ass niggas are mad because after four weeks, I think the first week I was like, yeah, Joe is in disarray. After four weeks of y'all not showing up. People start falling in love with the other two niggas. And let me predict the future. Y'all bums have dipped. The two new niggas will move on to Joe's main podcast. Joe, if you're smart, don't name it the Joe Bun Podcast with Ice and Ish. No disrespect to both y'all. No issues with y'all. But this is the Joe Budden and Friends podcast. It could be y'all. It could be his ex-girlfriend, his side chick. His son, it could be his op, it could be me, Charlemagne, Schultz, anybody. It's Joe Budden's platform. Remember I told you that. Don't put no more Stooges name in the title, Joe. Because you know why these two bozos were mad? They got mad because they thought the audience was going to hate everything the new niggas did. And the moment the new niggas, the, the audience said, well, they ain't that bad. I fuck with them. They felt betrayed. 
They're only mad you try to replace them because it worked. If it didn't work, they would be laughing at you. When it worked, their leverage went out the window. If, the, if their plan worked and nobody fucked with it, they would be demanding more. They tried to do a power play. Joe, you know this yourself. If Complex was able to succeed with replacing you on the Friday episode, nigga, they would have done way more shit and said, fuck paying Joe and deal with Joe. Let's keep doing this. It didn't work. And when it didn't work, it was hell. Joe, it's the same thing going on. These bozos are only mad that you replaced them because it worked. They were hoping it didn't work. They only are mad that it did. Remember that. What you tried to do was you tried to move us out, prove that you can keep the show going without us, because all you really want to do is put two niggas on there that's going to take a salary, because that was your thing with us when we started talking about accounting. Yo, when this deal is over, I'm putting y'all on a salary. What's the first thing we said? It's not happening. It's not happening. You're putting who on a salary? Mm -hmm. Salary? No, I, I remember the conversation. <laughs> that's not happening. And this, this was before the Spotify, or in between the Spotify deal. What, what I'm saying. Salary? Who, me? After we done put all these years in and no. all these, this sweat equity trying to build this shit? Salary? Me? And on top of that, let me backtrack even more. We're talking about percentages. Three of us was in the parking uh, parking lot of Totowa. Yo, we should do this percentage, this percentage. Cool. And then we started talking about numbers on like some friend fun shit chilling. Like, yo, we could probably get this amount from this. Yo, I wouldn't give y'all that percentage off that deal, though. And we was like, Joe, that's not how percentages work. Right. I wouldn't give you that much money. Right. And you naive. I'm thinking we just joking around type of shit. But... No, you, think, you, think you gotta be friend, accountable in your shit. You thinking your friend would never do being naive. Like that. I remember that conversation vividly when we brought up those percentages and then brought up a lump sum of what that would be. And he said, "Oh, I wouldn't give y'all that percentage off that lump sum." Like, yeah, no, that's how a percentage works, Joe. See, but, but see, you know what it is, man. And, and it's 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 to me, and this is just my perspective. I feel like Joe feels like a lot of the success of this podcast is based off of his music career, right? I feel like he thinks it's a. Let me stop that there. Mealy Maul, the success of the Joe Bun podcast is not based on Joe Bun's music career. It's based on Joe's personality. Joe, while having a personality that never clashed with the industry, was never good for music. It was good for blog TV. It was good for shit like Love and Hip Hop. It was good for all the melodramas we saw with him and all the undocumented chicks he used to bag out of Dykeman. Joe had a knack for creating stars on stars on stars out of some big booty Spanish bitches out of Dykeman. We saw mad of them come out, okay? Trust me. That's where we realize Joe has a thing about him. It's not about music. No one listens. I don't think this dumbass nigga realizes that no one has listened to the Joe Bun podcast because they think Joe... Nigga, I, I, I was on a debate show with him. Nigga, I, I only ever tried to listen to moon music bullshit tapes because I had to work with a nigga. I don't give a fuck. The nigga was, he's a interesting person. He's a very engaging person. He will bring you and get your attention. If you think his music is what's made him popular as a podcaster, you work for six years for nothing. The things that made him fail in music is what made is what made him a great podcaster. He's a different nigga. He has certain shit about him. The closest thing w I could con even consider is when he was calling out, was it Ransom? He was outside of Applebee's. The way he talked, the way he was trying to relate shit is why people tune in. So th this example you're about to give is null and void. Joe would be an idiot to think that his music brought people into the podcast. And anybody else who thought that would be an idiot to think that people are tuning in because they like his music. People, through his ups and downs, failures and success, liked him. And people just like how the people like me, there's people who hate me. Niggas who tune into me, some want to see me just catch an L. Some want to see me win, but they're going to tune in regardless. And when you look at the numbers, 
It just says a bunch of people. You don't know who's who. Same with Joe. That's what this fucking dumbass nigga don't realize. But I'll, I'll play what he says. The trickle down effect from his music career to the podcast. And my thing is, it's not. I've been in some of these cities when you were a rapper, Joe. I've been in some of these cities. It wasn't this many people weren't showing up for you. And see, and, and, and again, through all of this, I've had time to replay some shit in my head. And you know how certain shit has start to like come together. And he said something at the Highline Ballroom show we did when we were in the dressing room. He had went outside. He had recorded the people wrapped around the corner. And he came back and he said, yo, I got these niggas wrapped around the block. I got the I got the I got the line around the corner. And I looked at him and I said, Joe, you don't have the line around the corner. We have the line around the corner. Because you've done shows here before. And you've never had the line around the corner. You've done shows in Philly. And you've never had the line around the corner. You've done shows in Boston. And you've never had the line around the corner. And that's fine. But it's like the ego. The greed. I, I, I get it. It just yeah. it just becomes too much, and it's like and, and to his right too on personality. Yes, he has grown a, a large part of his personality outside of rapping with a cool. huge fan base. Cool. Which is why which is why you, you get the percentage you get. Which is why he gets. Which is why you get the percentage you get. I'm not I'm not nigga. I'm a regular nigga from uptown, bro. Yeah, this, I didn't come here whole, with no fan base. Like I get it. This whole I'm gonna take my value. little percentage and, and, and chill. But you're not gonna jerk me on my percentage that I took. <laughs> And this whole crazy value conversation that everyone's been debating about us and th and this and that and yo they they don't do shit here they they do a bunch of shit over here this and that Mo and I have never said we're these crazy personalities ever never said it bro I've never b bragged about what I do I like I'll gladly admit that I don't have cool. I don't I didn't have an audience you know Great. I was I was I was I was known in a you was a bum yo chat you want me to do this one more time I'll do it again you want me to do it again. I'll do it again, Chad. All right, see, y'all playing with me. You know what? Listen. Let me do it right now. Remember when these niggas was trying to talk to me? Yo, you don't know type of... Oh, hold on, I got it. Always remember... Y'all niggas was bums. Ruri, I pulled up your resume on camera and I'll do it again, you fucking bum. This was you. You was a digital marketing manager. Let me tell y'all this about all digital marketing manager. They bought this house and they bought my next house. Because they all got to pay me. Surprise. They push buttons for companies. And for agencies, they don't got no fucking original creative bone in their body. And I work with them still. And if I could talk like this and they still going to pay me, who's the boss? That's his claim to fame. Let's scroll down, though. Well, actually, I think he uh, he took the shit off here because the last time we put it, it, was, it showed some Sony shit. He took that shit the fuck off. His name is Ruri Pharrell. Anyway, you niggas was bums. Just let me just say that flat out. There's nothing you can say because when y'all niggas try to shit on me, at this point, y'all are starting to realize, and, I, and I'm, I'm glad my name ain't been mentioned thus far because I've lapped y'all in so many ways, and, and y'all realize there's nothing you can say about me. What you gonna say? Oh, well, yo, he corny. Y'all let me know who y'all want to be this week. The multimillionaire. With a big ass mansion and the multiple fucking foreign cars or the niggas who just got fired. No more question. And I know somebody I'm like, yo, act this is beneath you. It will never be beneath me to get at these bumps. It's a lifelong mission. Okay? Anyway, let's get back to this. Couple circles. Man, am I like talking with my friends? That's it. There's, va there's value amongst the three of us. Now, do I think Joe has crazy value by himself? Do I think you have crazy value by yourself? Do I think I have crazy value by myself? Yes. <laughs> wait, 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 whatever wait. you think that value wait, is from wait. a number standpoint, whatever. But the three of wait. us together with some... What? All right, let me ask you a question real quick. What value y'all think Ruri has by himself? I want to know. I want to know. What value y'all think Mealy Moore has by himself? 
I want to know. Can that let me know? Different type of value. And let's That's recognize all. that. Let's I just never, recognize nobody, that. I never walked in that pod and say, yo, I make this shit. Yeah. But it's, I, it, that, that, that demeanor was never presented from this side. Ever. Like, I'm, I'm not, you know, I see the, the, the people online, they say, oh, yeah, you know, Joe made y'all. Cool. If that's yeah. what you want to. But there's a reason he called me and asked me to join the pod, fam. And no disrespect to you, Rory, but when I came on, I feel like I made this shit more palatable. I agree. I feel like I made this shit more cool. I feel like I, I gave this shit I a different. Agree. Energy, like, no disrespect to nobody. You my guy. You know I fuck with you. More but I just made no. I'm just saying. I feel like he knows that though. So then say it. that, nigga. My, my, don't don't shit. let it. Don't let Charlemagne come on the show and have to say it. Why you don't say it? I, I remember when you had come on in the second episode. Joe and I were still in the talks of the girl thing. Still at that point, because right. we want to. No more. Let's just let's just be the guys' bo podcast. <laughs> more killing this shit. And but 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 see and but my that, only but problem. See, and Rory, I also don't take any people are just weirdos in that type of. I don't take offense to that. No no no. Said, I'm not. I know I'm not, what you did when you came. I'm on. not taking offense to it. I'm just saying that he don't speak up about that shit. He yeah. don't be like, nah, you bugging. I'm like nah, my man, they they got value. They bring shit to this. Like he let these narratives run and he play into them. Bro, he don't think that. He don't think y'all are valuable, nigga. Y'all never done that. It, it, it would be hard for me to think that someone around me is valuable if I'd never seen them do stuff without me. I would think the value all attributes to me because the one catalyst in the shit I've done without you and the shit I'm doing with you is me. I'm like, I mean, of course it's like, does. fam, like, I see all of that, but, but he know that I don't give a fuck about that. Like, he know that I'm just the type of dude, like, nigga, I don't care about that, man. Like, nigga, we having fun. We busting it up. We making some money. We looked up one day. We had an audience. Cool. Yeah. But my thing is like we gotta put your ego and put your put your ego to the side, homie. Put your ego to the side. Like it's not that you, you it's not that serious. Like what you doing right now, what you did to your niggas, the way he up there talking about me, the way he up there talking about that's corny. Like that's corny shit to me, fam. Uh, uh, like you saying few things that really offend me, him saying Rory's measly ass and that I was trying to manipulate shit. Let's let's be transparent and tell the truth more. Because I'm the only one that was talking to him and was talking to you. Right. I was trying to save this fucking podcast like you would not fucking believe. Mm -hmm. With two people that were done with it. Mm -hmm. Joe was done with the shit. You were done with the shit. And mm -hmm. I'm the only one sitting here trying to keep this shit going. So when Joe brings up these words like measly, yo, you lost your leverage. Leverage on what? What is this narrative you talk about leverage? I didn't go into any type of thing to have leverage. Again, that's I'm just... trying to save our fucking podcast, and these are the terms that need to happen, which is terms we agreed upon two years ago. I'm not... Rory, you're not trying to save the podcast. The Joe Button podcast exists with or without you. You're trying to save your job. Let me say it one more time. You're not trying to save the podcast. You're trying to save your job. The podcast won't be named something different when Ice and Ish are on it. It'll be called the Joe Button Podcast yet again. It's not going to go away. It's not going to do less numbers. It's going to do the same numbers. Because people have adopted that to their routine. Let's slow down on you thinking that you're trying to do people a favor. Realized you guys are replaceable. How did he find out that? He put two new niggas on for a couple of weeks. And people, first week, oh, what about the old guys? Second week, wait, the old guys not coming back. The third week, yo, these guys not that bad. The fourth week, oh, we fuck with them. The leverage was, let me, and Rory, this is why I hate bum ass things like you. You even said it. Part of you guys not showing up is kind of like when Joe tried to not show up for Friday episodes with Complex. I have the context because I worked at Complex. Joe came back with leverage because contracts changed because Joe wasn't there. The amount of money promised to, to, to Complex was changed because Joe didn't show up. So you know what? He came back with, oh, I got some leverage. You know why he said, and people do think, and I believe you lost leverage? Because your only leverage would be 
Well, if we not on the episode, people ain't gonna tune in as much. Remember what I said earlier in the in the stream? The people are there for Joe. Joe got the contracts. And if Joe could pull similar views with whoever else, what has changed? He didn't have a proof of concept till he put in ice and ish for four weeks. He did. And the moment, let me tell you, you know the moment you got fired, Rory? The moment he realized he didn't need you anymore. And that was the week you didn't show up. It was the week that Ice and Ish did a great job handling the episode with him and Kevin Samuels that did like a couple million. It was the week he realized these dudes are pressing me for percentage while these dudes are lucky to be here. And that's why, Joe, I'm going to keep giving you the advice. Have no permanent host on your podcast. They will all eventually be entitled like Rory and Mealy Mall. Even if you fuck with them, bring them on for two weeks out of the month and bring on two or other new people for the other two weeks. Priceless advice. But I'm only giving it because Joe Mall got I'm not looking for leverage. Right. If I was looking for leverage, that would come in renegotiation. Right. I'm not as fucking stupid as you think. Right. Stop with these narratives to, to dump. You are looking for leverage. Rory, who do you think? you think niggas is stupid? If you, you didn't show up to the new episodes. The nigga told you to take two episodes off. You didn't show up for three, three more weeks or four or five more weeks. You wanted to prove a point. That's called leverage. You wanted to prove that you are needed. And maybe he shouldn't have the error of judgment to tell you not to show up. That's proving a point. People that just think you smart. There was no, well, I wasn't looking for leverage on anything. I was trying to save this podcast mm -hmm. and I talked with my mans and I talked with you and I put together a list of what would happen on top of the things I needed as well. You said you was going to meet them, said, oh, wait, that's all y'all need. R right. And then didn't meet them. Right. And then you was wondering why this didn't happen. Right. So some, I'm the one manipulating shit. You right. came to me and said I could easily make this. L let me help you out, Ruri. You know, in the terms of like, you know, a, a marriage, there's a term to call it's cheaper to keep her. Where, which means it's cheaper to be with her. Even if you cheat like a motherfucker, it's cheaper to be with her than go through a divorce. You know what Joe realized? It's cheaper to let y'all go. That's all that happened. It's business. But where do you break friendship and business? That's the problem. Because Joe's probably thinking, y'all expecting percentages, y'all doing audits, y'all barely showing up, y'all got stank attitudes, y'all doing this, y'all doing that. I just saw two new replacements who don't even care about percentages. They they just good if I just like send them cars every week and they'll show up for whatever. It's not cheaper to keep you bumps. It's cheaper to let y'all go. That's what he did. I keep saying y'all was trying to save the podcast. I keep telling you the podcast continues with or without you. So what did you save? You were trying to save your jobs. This shit happened. Came back. Nothing happened. Right. And I, and, and another thing that I've seen people say, oh, you, you riding with Rory. I'm riding with what's right. I, did anyone ever think you was doing what was best for you and I was doing what was best for me? And we wasn't even riding for each other? Right. <laughs> And, and that, but see again, that's but that's why this is important because I like I said I didn't even want to do this. You didn't want to do this, but no, we, we came to something. We was like it's absolutely necessary because these narratives have to stop. We got to put it into this because this is not what happened. This is not the truth. And again, I give you a whole bunch of credit because when he told you to stay home, the first thing I told you was, I said, Rory, I'm not recording without you. I remember. I'm not doing that. I said because to me. That's nasty. It's basically saying like, you know, we go to the club, the bouncer say your man can't get in. He ain't got the right shoes on. And then we continue to go in the club. That's corny. I'm never doing that. Fuck it. We all leaving. So when he said he told you to stay home. Nah, we're not doing that. Go to the studio. Joe, let me holler at you. 
and we have the talk we have. And then that turns into something else. It's like, Joe, why is it always a problem when people are having a conversation about this show and you're not around? Like, do you feel like niggas is trying to conspire some shit behind your back? Because that's not what it is, bro. Niggas are having creative talks on how to make this shit better, how to grow this shit, productive conversations. I said, but you being real defensive when you're not around and people are talking about the show, it's saying something. Same way six years ago when Elliot and I just went to lunch. Especially when you have a whole bunch of conversations about this podcast and we're not around and then we continue to be like, okay, let's roll with it. Let's roll with it. He owns it. He owns it. It's his to talk about, not yours. All right, cool. And again, we might have to take some onus in that because we probably let that go on for on, on, on we probably let that go on for too long. So cool, we'll take some onus on that. But then we had that talk, and I'm just seeing him. I'm just like, oh, I, he thinks that he's really this this new guy because I'm hearing it, and then the way he's talking to me, and I'm just like, I think y'all got things twisted. No, I don't, we don't got nothing twisted. I think that money started to come in. You started to see more money than you ever seen in your life. You started to have conversations with niggas you wanted to have conversations with as, as a rapper that would never talk to you. So I think that you starting to feel like this new person and you got this new leash on life, which is fine. I'm not love, even mad at that, but don't don't bring that love, energy. Love that for my people. Keep that Just, energy <laughs> with some groupie bitches. Keep that energy with some fans. Don't bring that energy to your niggas, though. You can have an ego with women and fans and all of that. Don't have no ego with your niggas that built something with you that was in the trenches with you like I was. A nigga that a nigga that done been locked up with you like I was. And if you remember the conversation the three of us had that would we thought was productive, he said, Yes, I like my ego. My ego is important in certain places. I should channel it better, but I should never channel it the way I channeled it with my friends. This is his words, not mine. But then what happened now? Like, That's that went I'm out saying. the window? Because we had a five-hour conversation at his house. We thought we made some progress. And, 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 and be clear, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I got to give my guy Rory props on this too. I was done with the pod after that conversation we had. I was done. That's why that measly word and that like you ain't gonna never look me in my eyes. bothered me so fucking much. I'm like, fam, I was the one trying to keep this shit together. I'm going to give you that credit because I told you, I said, Rory, I would never sit down with him again. I said, because I can't fake it. That energy, that chemistry, that laugh and shit, the fun, it's not there no more. When you look me in my eyes and tell me after all these years, all this grinding, all this building and pushing that we did, you tell me that this shit is none of my business. I can never unhear that, fam. I can never unhear you say that to me. And, and granted, maybe there's a, a bunch of adjectives for me, for me trying to force this podcast to keep going. It's not measly. It's not liar. It's not manipulator. No. No, and and, and, Listen, I, and I'll have you back I, on that. It was never that I, with did you. Did I force something? Maybe. Did you I did. did I try too hard to make sure the shit? No, went? no. Because I really thought we could get no, back to it. No, maybe. No, you know what you did? You did what you were supposed to do as a friend. Like, yo, fam, let's just make this shit right. Let's just make this shit right. Like, fuck it, man. We built some dope. Let's just. This is just a bump in the road. Let's patch this shit up. Let's keep it moving. Man. But I'm gonna be honest. Like I told you, I said, fam, I'm done. I had a two, I had a three hour FaceTime with Royce and we talked about everything. And he, I, te he, I text Royce afterwards after you called me and I thanked Royce. He talked, he talked to me about a whole love, bunch love of slaughterhouse Royce, shit. You. He talked to me about a whole bunch of, you know, and it was like, but I'm telling Royce, I'm like, fam, just in the way I'm again, he had to pull up with Crook. Never, yeah. never put it out. I, I watched it. Never put it out. But it's a great pull up. He said something in that pull up. That when I saw it, it stuck with me. And when the shit fell apart with us, that shit played in my head. And him and Crook were talking about, Crook said something to the extent of, but bro, we have a contract with them. We got to honor our contract. We signed this. We agreed to this. We got to honor that. And his, Joe's response was, I don't give a fuck about no contract. I don't honor no contracts. And Crook just laughed like, all right, well, if that's how you feel, what are we even talking about? Like, I can't, it's no talking to you. Mm -hmm. And when he said that, I'm like, you don't honor no contracts. Well, and here we are today. Well, also, let's let's get into some of that conversation that we had where Joe was saying, because I, I, I want to make this as fair as possible. And I don't like to speak for people unless I speak for this them. This is correctly. all the truth. No, I know. I, that's why I could sit here Joe, comfortably. Joe said, Joe what said, color is this? Is this like a, uh, uh, what's this, uh, pistachio? 
Let's call it pistachio. I'm sitting here in my pistachio. Teal. This, I'm, in, I'm in my teal pistachio. My karma is beautiful. My aura is... I'm, I'm, I'm great, man. Joe said he didn't even honor our contract and overpaid us because he said he looked at our contract and saw what that money would have been off our percentage base and said, ugh, I don't like it. I want this to be the last time we talk about this, so I'm even going to put in his good points that he said. Right. <laughs> Which, again, I'm not sitting here saying... I didn't believe my man's when he said that. Right. <laughs> right. I did. Okay, cool. Yeah. And thank, I said, thank you. I said, yo, thank you. Yeah. That's fire. That's right. some real solid, right. real man shit to do. Right. But when we go back to the points of when we get our respected corners, let's figure out what makes this work for our friendship and the business side. Mm -hmm. Accounting got brought back into play from when it stopped with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And everyone made it clear I don't care how far you dance around it. Just throwing numbers in an Excel spreadsheet is not accounting. It's not accounting. So, yes. Did I get accounting that said I was overpaid? Did I get accounting that said Joe is the greatest guy on earth? Of course. Mm -hmm. I did. And even then, did not say he was wrong. I said, just, you know, just give me the regular accounting. Like, right. you taking a whole month and, and getting mad at me and resenting me because you've been overpaying me but didn't tell anyone. And... You now have the accountants working on this instead of something else, and they're offended and this and that. Well, let's, let, let me be clear. I don't think we were overpaid. I'm still, you don't, you I'm don't still sit, on the you don't side sit, of, you don't sit on I don't that, know anything. You don't, no, <laughs> That's been sure. my issue the but whole I'm time. Just, I'm, just going with, I'm just going with the optic. You don't, sit, you don't sit on the set and talk about me and talk about you the way he did, and then underneath all of that, you're, you're overpaying somebody. You, right. It don't add, it don't, let's, it don't right. add let's, let, let's say I'm overpaid. It don't add up. Let's I'm say I'm sorry. overpaid. That, don't, that energy don't even match. Let's, let's you don't overpay people that you feel like that about and that you end up talking about like... Yo, I'm I hope these niggas never do a podcast. Yo, these niggas is boring as watching paint dry. Bro, I'm about to fall asleep over here, man. Like, what are they talking about? Said, this is about money. Rory's asking about money. Let's dead that now. Spotify deal is about to end. Even before we even went into negotiations, Joe had said to me, on some friend shit, we was at lunch, he said... I already don't think this is going to be a good situation for us. I said, bet. I've been saving my money. Fuck Spotify. If they come back with a crazy amount of number, but it don't make sense for us, fuck it. I don't mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. I've been saving my money. I don't splurge like that. I'm mm -hmm. chilling. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I think it was six or seven months before our deal even ended. So I was like, let's just get back. Nobody go crazy with their bread. And if we got to go independent, we got to go independent. That's great. Whatever. That's probably a cool scenario. You don't have to worry about me at all. Mm-hmm. Don't ever make a decision, and I've I said this to him a thousand times during that Spotify deal. That's why this also offends me off his shit. I said, don't ever think you have to worry about me with money. Mm -hmm. Don't ever. Further proof, as I kept telling y'all, man, this fucking bum ass, a bitch ass nigga never knew a fucking thing about a Spotify deal, man. Get this bozo out of here, man. Ever make a decision about me mm -hmm. that has to do with making sure I'm paid? Right. I love you for that, but don't ever do it. Mm hmm. Cash app deal comes around. Pardon, his cash app deal for his pull-ups, according to him. Mm -hmm. We leave Spotify. He starts bringing in cash app to our podcast. Amazing. Love that. Cool. I get an email from the accounting company, CC'd with Ian, on what a payment is going to be per month. This is the cash app deal. Yep. Naturally, as I always, always do, and as I told Joe, since the day we started doing business together, I don't care if it's $10 or $10 billion, I'm going to ask, so what is it? Mm -hmm. Cash app deal was great. It was around the exact same money, if not a couple hundred dollars more than what we were doing with Spotify per month. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Love you for getting that. My due. Mm -hmm. Just ask, so what is this? Right. Simple, simple question. Mm -hmm. Left it alone. Didn't even really get an answer. Didn't particularly care. Right. Everything's cool. We in a pandemic. We don't have a deal. You out there getting us money. My God. Fuck with you. Don't right. care. Whatever. This is about the show. All right, chat. Yo, yo, yo. Fuck this bum ass dude. Six nine, keep calling me. He won't talk to y'all. I told him.